Hello, everyone. I would like you to picture in your mind right now some adults playing Magic the Gathering or Dungeons and Dragons at a store. I'm sure we've all been walking down the mall and seen one of these game stores, and you probably have some negative images that come to your mind as I ask that question. As a small business owner, I would like to challenge that and attract a different type of clientele. Welcome, everyone. I am Joseph Stover, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my ideal clients for a friendly local game store, FLGS, uh, named Fireside Meeples. The problem uh, with running a friendly local game store is typically the most the people that are drawn to it the most sometimes have the worst attitudes, right? So we have these definitely not ideal clients that can completely overshadow your business and actually draw away from the customers that you actually want in your store. Here's this guy named Francis. He's playing Magic the Gathering. And he just lost. Now, obviously, if you are someone else in that store and this happens, you're not going to be comfortable there. And honestly, this this uh, gaming store did not kick him out because he spends lots of money there. But you lose clientele based on the actions of that, of, of your other clients. You know, here is a gaming convention. You know, this guy's being trying to be funny here, but it's actually true, right? We can all kind of picture in our, our mind, you know, all the people there and the odor that goes in with some of these stores. Once again, we're drawing people away from our business. This is the more of the style we want. These are some guys I played card games with in Texas, and we're playing one of the most cutthroat games there. It's called Munchkin. It's really, it's actually really fun. But none of the ones here are angry. Everyone's having fun, right? These are these are the type of clients we want. And I'll be breaking that more down either way. So in marketing, we have we have to identify our ideal client first. Then we're going to use the market space and figure out how many of them there are how to reach them and how to solve common frustrations that our ideal client may have. All right, so first off, to identify your ideal client, we have to break these into four subcategories. So I'll just go on these in order. So we have demographics. So these are some common demographics in marketing that we use to help identify. The ones that I pick from ideal client is gonna be around 20 to 40 years old, you know, having your own income and married. Now, the point of this is that you want to have your ideal client be able to reach a large group of people. If him and his spouse are both coming in, then they're able to see things from a different perspective and to be able to you know, bring in other couples into, your, into, into the friendly local game store. Now, the, for geographics, these are the... These are some of the main subcategories of geographics, right? So where do these people live? Is it important to us? Our deal client should definitely be in our neighborhood, right? It doesn't make any sense if he's on the other side of the world, right? And for where I live at in Frankfurt, in Ramstein, Germany, there's 53,000 53, Americans here, right? And this is an urban environment. And so this is what we're going to be targeting to. Next one we have is psychographics. For a for a friendly local game store, for our ideal client, this is going to be one of the most important aspects. Business saying that you know people don't quit their jobs, they quit their bosses. And a lot of business in a friendly local game store is lost because of the attitudes and the behaviors of some of your other clients. You know, in Dutte Marketing, it says to fire 20% of your clients, and I can definitely see the validity in that. So for the psychographics, for us, for for Fireside Meeples, we want the person to have a interest in board games and collectible card games. We want them to be able to enjoy a wide variety of these games and genres. The reason for this is that you know, we need them to be able to tell other people about about what we offer and why all of these games are valuable, right? Just because I personally enjoy 
very strategic games, I can't play that every time I have people come over, every time that somebody comes over. Someone that's never played anything other than a Risk or Monopoly is not going to be down for an eight-hour war game. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. So, so we have to be able to market to people that see the value of all styles of games and doesn't have this elitist attitude. We want them definitely to be able to be social and want to introduce new people to the hobby. Because most of our, a lot of the sales are gateway games, right? Like Pandemic and Ticket to Ride and Munchkin, as I mentioned earlier. We definitely want them to be good sportsmanships and enjoy learning new games and more importantly, teaching these new games to other potential clients. So for behavior graphics, for this one, for a friendly local game store, we want the person to, you know, maybe come in like once a paycheck, right? Every two weeks to try out a new game. You know, he definitely wants to have a loyalty to buying in person versus online. The problem with a lot of friendly local game stores in general is that we can't compete against a 30% reduction on Amazon. And with free two-day shipping, there has to be other reasons for people to come into your store. And so our ideal client definitely wants to buy in person browse new styles of games and buy one every couple weeks once again to introduce new people so with the readiness to buy stage i definitely feel like the liking stage is the best because if he already knows exactly what he wants and you don't have it then he then i'm just he's going to go online and buy it but if he has a general idea of like hey i don't have a cooperative survival game right like robinson crusoe then then when he comes in your store and I can use my expertise to guide him to the game that fits what he's looking for versus wanting this exact game. You know, obviously as a business, we think that it should always just be somebody who knows exactly what they want. They come in, they buy it and they get out. But the, the beauty of a friendly local game store is we can introduce games to introduce games that he doesn't know about. Right. So we're going to use the market space here to find out who is in my area, right? So I actually did more sort of research and there's 60,000 Americans in the Cosmoslot military community. Some of these, Battle Bear Comic and Games is actually, an, it would be an opposing game store. It has 510 followers on Facebook, right? So these aren't just people that liked it. These are people that get updates every single time they make a, they make a post. Um, Gerd's Comic-Con is another one at 755 likes. Now for the, now this is for German and American speakers. The rest of these three are only English speakers. So Board Gamers of the KMC is a Facebook group that has 209 active members. Um, KMC Nerd Herd has 355, and the K-Town Board Game Meetup group has 286 members. Now these are people that went out of their way to broadcast that, hey, I'm into these hobbies and I would like to meet up with other people. So this gives us a general idea of around two to 300 ideal clients or potential ideal clients that at least have a, a pretty high interest in the hobby, right? Now, if I would just type in Magic the Gathering, obviously these numbers would be much higher, but we wanna be, we wanna be looking at board gamers and tabletop gamers and just you know, that, that style. We want to be meeting with that. So how do we reach them, right? They're these ideal clients, these 200 and some odd people, two to 300. Well, the first stuff we have is the wizard store, like wizard store locator. D and D has grown in popularity exponentially, you know, some due to, due to stranger things, but just in general, in the past 10 years, wizards has made a lot of money off D and D with their new edition. You know, we have celebrities now playing D&D. We have, you know, the Dallas Cowboys obsessed with Settlers of Catan. Well, the, one of the main places that people go to find friendly local game stores is the Wizard Store Locator. The, B, the Board Game Geek is a website where it has 2 million active members. This is by far the most popular um, website dedicated to board games. You know, they have all the ratings and all the reviews and people upload images and you can sort by, you know, how people play and stuff like that. 
on this website they have a store locator this is really helpful I, i've used it in the past when i go to a new city and i don't feel like browsing through the store locator for wizards trying to find an actual board game store versus just a card shop so having your website on this bgg store locator will definitely reach the ideal client that went out of his way to find a board game store not just a card store you can also reach them at libraries right we can donate a lot of these like intro games you know pandemic and sellers of Catan are insanely popular right now and if your library doesn't have some you know we can donate these games and you know put our business right there on the on, on the box so when they're like hey this was really fun where did this come from right they can come to your store you can meet them um, another one is meetup.com. Meetup.com has, so we'll go here for, uh, this is a board game store. This is for board gaming in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Just here for the next three days, there is quite a few actual board gaming meetups. d and Adventure League, play some, the Mill, the Mill, the Mill Board Games Meetup, uh, the Teaching and Playing Chess. So all these, and this is just in three days here. So this is a really good way to meet, once again, people that have went out of their way to meet other people that share their hobby. Uh, Roll for Group is another one. This is a not as popular, but it's becoming a lot more popular with board game groups because it's dedicated to playing board games. So like I made an account on here. There wasn't really one in Fayetteville. Uh, I'm sorry, in, you know, Bramstein, where I'm currently living in Germany. But once again, you know, we're a little bit different over here. So I actually wanted to go more back in depth with the Wizard Sword Lake hitter and show you how important it is. All right. For the Wizards store locator, we can see that there's four different gaming stores in this area. How do we reach the ideal clients to pick our store? All right. So first off, we go from the stores to the D&D events. Once again, if it's, if it's very common for shops just to sell a bunch of card games, and if we want somebody that's more interested in stuff other than card games, which is what we're targeting here, then we want to find, so they're going to be looking for D&D events. So we want to be able to advertise on here, right? We, so right now we can see that The Hobbit and Angry Comics are the only people actually having D&D meetups. So if I was a customer and I was trying to find a game store, I would be picking one of these two. However, you can't just have on your front of your page only card games after saying you do D&D. Like, I went through this website, and here's the event calendar. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Friday Night Magic, more Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Monday Night Card Games, you know, Pokemon tournaments. These are all card games. There's no, there's no board games on here. You know, this is their Facebook page. Once again, only card games. So, as a as an ideal client, I wouldn't be interested in this. So we have to make sure that we're marketing to just more than just card games. We have to be advertising all of the, all the different products. The other shop, the, the Hobbit Hobby, their website doesn't even work. I mean, it's good they had one, but it doesn't do any good if they don't have it. Their Facebook pictures are, once again, nothing but tabletop gaming. So once again, a little bit more interesting to me personally and might be able to track the ideal clients, but it's still only showing one style of game. Now, actually on their, you know, Google Photos, now they have a little bit more, but, you know, it's just a little bit harder. So, a lot of people at this point would just quit, but hopefully you're, hopefully the AL client's persistent and looks at these other two, even though they didn't actually have any Dungeons & Dragons um, events happening. So, you go to Gamers Guild here, you can see on the right side here that they have the Gamers Guild Board Game Night. They have Hero Clicks. On the top, you can see they have dedicated sections for role playing games, card games, board games, miniature games. You can see the gaming space here and how open it is and with a wide variety of product. This was one of their photos from their Facebook page. Once again, a very relaxing atmosphere. And obviously dedicated to more than just board games, or, or I'm sorry, more dedicated to more than just card games, and dedicated to more than just tabletop gaming. Now, once again, wide variety of product here. And as a client, this is where I would go. So Gamers Guild, Gamers Guild did it right here, 
by advertising. They just needed to make sure to have their actual Dungeons & Dragons on store on Wizard Store Locator because, unfortunately, that is where most people look the first time. So how do we solve the common frustrations? So in the friendly local game store community, one of the most common things is that as soon as you walk into one of these stores, they have the products around the walls and in the middle is all the tables. And as soon as you walk in, you're just being stared at. We have to separate the gaming space and the retail space. This is a small store. Now, this doesn't have massive square footage, but you can still see that they have a dedicated space. So as soon as you walk in through the door, especially if you're a first timer, you don't feel intimidated. And I know my wife always complains that every time she goes in, if it is set up, you know, with this gaming space in the middle, that she feels like everyone's just staring at her the entire time. You know, everyone's like, oh my God, a girl, you know. So she doesn't really feel comfortable in a lot of those gaming stores you know being introverted and you know that's not comfortable for her also another thing is is that if we want to reach an ideal client you know that's two plus we have to be able to be welcoming for kids right so we have to, so adding just a small space dedicated to, to kids goes a long way right so this is a store in Austin, Texas, and you can see that they have non-breakable products on the bottom. On the bookcase, they don't have anything on the bottom that, you know, a crawling baby might grab. And then right next to it is a bunch of stuffies. Once again, kids love to play with. So it kind of gives the kid a little space while the parents browse the store. And, you know, we want someone to be social. We want someone that's, you know, emotionally mature. And not saying having a kid makes you emotionally mature, the other thing is a lot of friendly local game stores are super messy and as an ideal, you know, for our ideal client, we don't want them to, you know, come in and just immediately be turned off by our gaming space. So, you know, obviously we just need to use a warehouse like every other business, but I don't know why this isn't common. This is Polish sports cards, etc. in Hawaii where I used to live. And this is under a banner, right? There's boxes and inventory and product everywhere. And trust me, the rest of the store isn't any better. Our ideal clients would definitely be turned away from that. You know, so these are some of the references I had for reaching the ideal client, especially on the Facebook stuff. All right, thank you everyone. And thank you for watching my presentation on the ideal clients for a friendly local game store, especially Fireside Meeples.